Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. We have integral x from 0 to 1, log x, log 1 plus or minus x squared over 1 plus or minus x squared. These are, in fact, four integrals. We have already seen three of them. If we have plus, plus, or minus, plus, the value is in terms of the imaginary part of the trial logarithm of 1 plus i over 2. The minus minus case appeared while investigating the sum k from 1 to infinity, 1 over k times y squared over 8 minus summation v from 1 to k, 1 over 2v minus 1 squared. This sum is exactly equal to that integral. Its value was obtained using the data function. The focus in this video is the integral x from 0 to 1, log x, log 1 plus x squared over 1 minus x squared, a plus sign in the numerator, a minus sign in the denominator. The minus minus case is also tackled without using the data function and its derivatives. We do things in 23 steps. The first steps are old friends. So we have this very useful integral, x from 0 to 1, x to the a, log x to the b. We do the change of variables, x equal to e to the minus w over a plus 1. When x is 1, w is 0. When x tends to 0 from above, w tends to infinity. dx is minus the exponential, dw over 1 plus a. We can use the minus sign to have the limits of integration from 0 to infinity. x to the a is this exponential. Log x to the power b is minus w over a plus 1 all to the power b. This exponential is this term here in dx. We take minus 1 to the b over a plus 1 to the b plus 1 outside the integral. We are left with gamma of b plus 1. The integral of x from 0 to 1, x to the a log x to the b is minus 1 to the b, gamma of b plus 1 over a plus 1 to the power b plus 1. We have a number of integrals whose evaluation follows the same method. When the magnitude of x is less than 1, 1 over 1 minus x can be written as the series summation g from 0 to infinity, x to the power g. So 1 over 1 plus x is summation over non-negative integer g of minus x all to the power g. So we have minus 1 to the g and x to the g. The next step is to integrate term by term, applying our first result. So this integral here is minus 1 to the 1, that's minus 1, gamma of 2, which is 1. Then we divide by g plus 1 squared. We get this sum, which is minus between brackets, 1 over 1 squared, minus 1 over 2 squared, plus 1 over 3 squared, minus 1 over 4 squared, and so on. If every term is positive, then we have zeta of 2. Because the reciprocals of the squares of the positive even integers are preceded by minus signs, then we need to subtract double the sum of the reciprocals of the positive even integers, that's 1 over 4 multiplied by zeta of 2. So in this bracket, we have 1 half times zeta of 2. Zeta of 2 is pi squared over 6. So this integral is minus pi squared over 12. For this integral, we do the same. We don't have this minus 1 to the g factor. We end up with minus zeta of 2. If we have log squared, we have a square here. Minus 1 to the 2 is 1. Gamma of 3 is 2. Downstairs, we have j plus 1 to the power 3. This sum is zeta of 3. This integral is 2 zeta of 3. If we change x to 1 minus x, we also get that integral x from 0 to 1 log 1 minus x squared divided by x is 2 times zeta of 3. In number 5, we use the series representation of log 1 minus x, which is minus summation g from 1 to infinity x to the g divided by g. We have x downstairs, so when we integrate term by term, we have integral x from 0 to 1, x to the g minus 1 log x. The value of this integral is minus 1 over g squared. Minus 1 times minus 1, that's 1. We get summation over positive integer g of 1 over g cubed, that's zeta of 3. If we change x to 1 minus x, we also get that integral x from 0 to 1 log x log 1 minus x over 1 minus x is zeta of 3. If we have 1 plus x squared downstairs, like in number 2, we get this minus 1 to the g, but we have x to the power 2g. The integral is minus 1 over 2g plus 1 all squared. What is this summation? It is minus 1 over 1 squared, minus 1 over 3 squared, plus 1 over 5 squared, minus 1 over 7 squared, and so on. Inside the bracket, we have Catalan's constant g. If we have x log x rather than log x, then inside the integral, we have x to the 2g plus 1. When we use the result in step 1, Downstairs, we get 2g plus 2 all squared. We can take 2 as a common factor. We get 1 fourth outside the sum. Like in step 2, the sum is minus 1 half zeta of 2. Overall, the integral x from 0 to 1, x log x over 1 plus x squared is minus pi squared over 48. When we do integration by parts, we typically encounter limits that we need to evaluate. The main tool used is L'Hopital's rule. For instance, if we have log x multiplied by integral y from 0 to x, log y over 1 minus y, if x tends to 0 from above, log x tends to minus infinity, and the integral tends to 0. We can rewrite this product as the integral over 1 over log x. That's a 0 over 0 situation. L'Hopital's rule tells us that the limit of this ratio is the limit of the ratio of the first derivatives. Downstairs, we have minus 1 over the square of log x. 
times one over x in the numerator, we get this in the ground with y replaced by x. One minus x tends to one as x tends to zero. We end up with minus the cube of log x over one over x. This is an infinity over infinity situation. We apply L'Hopital's rule and so on. We obtain that this limit is equal to zero. We have integral x from zero to one log x log one plus x squared over one minus x. Let's write this integral as integral x from zero to one log one plus x squared d integral from zero to x log t over one minus t. When we do integration by parts, if x is equal to one, we have log two multiplied by the integral t from zero to one log t over one minus t. In the third step, we found that this integral is minus pi squared over six. So we get minus pi squared over six log two. When x tends to zero from above, we have log one, which is zero, integral from zero to zero, which is also zero. We also have minus integral x from zero to one. This integral here multiplied by the derivative of log one plus x squared, which is two x over one plus x squared. Change variable t, t is y times x. When t is zero, y is zero. When t is equal to x, y is equal to one. dt is x dy. This two is here. We have x squared over one plus x squared times one minus x y. This is one over one plus y squared between brackets, one over one minus x y minus one plus x y over one plus x squared. We split into two integrals. In the first one, log x y is written as log x plus log y. This is multiplied by one plus x y. When we multiply these two brackets, we get four terms, log x plus log y plus y x log x plus x y log y. Note that in the denominator, we have one plus x squared and one plus y squared. The integrals with respect to x and y can be separated. We have integral x from zero to one, log x over one plus x squared. Integral y from zero to one, one over one plus y squared. When we process log y, we get the same product here with x and y interchange. We have the same value. So we can just consider this product and multiply by two. There is another two here, so we have four. The antiderivative of one over one plus y squared is the inverse tangent of y. When we use the limits of integration, we have the inverse tangent of one, which is pi over four. The integral with respect to x was obtained in step six. This integral is equal to minus g. When we process this term, we have integral x from zero to one, x log x over one plus x squared times integral y from zero to one, y over one plus y squared. We get the same value when we consider this part here. We can just multiply by two. Because of this two, we get four. The antiderivative of y over one plus y squared is one half log one plus y squared. Using the limits of integration, we get one half log two. The integral with respect to x was in step seven. We got minus y squared over 48. Let's go back here, interchange the order of integration. The inner integral is with respect to x, change x. We use new variable w, w is equal to x times y. When x is zero, w zero. When x is one, w is y. dx is dw over y. One minus x y becomes one minus w. In the denominator, we have the product y times one plus y squared. One over y times one plus y squared can be written as one over y minus y over one plus y squared. The antiderivative of this function of y is log y minus one half log one plus y squared. We write this part as integral y from zero to one. The integrand is integral w from zero to y log w over one minus w d log y minus one half log one plus y squared. When we do integration by parts, we need to consider the product of this bracket and this integral. When y tends to one from above, log y tends to zero, log one plus y squared tends to log two. We get integral w from zero to one log w over one minus w. By step three, this is minus pi squared over six. When w tends to zero, the integral tends to zero. Log one plus y squared tends to zero, so that's not a problem. The problem is when we consider the product of this integral and log y. But this is exactly the limit investigated in step eight, the last point on the previous page. The limit is zero. We also have plus two integral y from zero to one, this function of y times the derivative of this function with respect to y, which is log y over one minus y. Split this integral into two integrals. One of them is two zeta of three, the other is exactly the integral that we have on the left-hand side. So this integral can go to the left-hand side. We have two times the integral equal to those terms, dividing both sides by two. We get that integral x from zero to one, log x log one plus x squared over one minus x is minus pi over two times g minus three pi squared log two over 16 plus two times zeta of three. Let's investigate a close integral to this one, but rather than having x squared, we have x. The steps are essentially the same. We do integration by parts. We write this integral as integral x from zero to one, log one plus x, d, integral t from zero to x, log t over one minus t. 
the product of these two functions of x tends to zero as x tends to zero from above. When x tends to one from below, we get log two times the integral in step three. Here, we change t to y. We do partial fractions. We split into two integrals. In the first one, where x and y are separated in the denominator, we write log xy as log x plus log y. This double integral is two times integral x from zero to one, log x over one plus x, integral y from zero to one, one over one plus y. The antiderivative is log one plus y. Using the limits of integration, this is log two. From step two, this is minus y squared over 12. We interchange the order. The inner integral here is with respect to x. Let w be equal to x times y. We also do partial fractions to write one over y times one plus y as one minus y minus one over one plus y. And the antiderivative is log y minus log one plus y. The product of these two functions of y tends to zero as y tends to zero from above. When y tends to one, this bracket tends to minus log two. The integral tends to minus y squared over six. We also have the integral with this function of y multiplied by the derivative of this integral with respect to y, which gives us log y over one minus y. Split into two integrals. One of them is two zeta of three as obtained in step four. The other one is the same integral on the left hand side with a minus sign. Double this integral is equal to those guys dividing by two and simplifying, we get that integral x from zero to one log x log one plus x over one minus x is zeta of three minus pi squared log two over four. Our first target is integral x from zero to one log x log one plus x squared over one minus x squared. One over one minus x squared is one half one over one minus x plus one half one over one plus x. So to obtain this integral, we need this one and that one. We already have this one on the previous page. We now need to obtain that one. Note that one over one minus x minus one over one plus x is equal to one minus x squared in the denominator. Upstairs, we get one plus x minus one plus x. This difference is two x over one minus x squared. Move this term to the right hand side and this one to the left hand side. We get that one over one minus x minus two x over one minus x squared is equal to one over one plus x. To evaluate this integral, the first step is to write one over one plus x as minus two x over one minus x squared plus one over one minus x. Split into two integrals. One of them is our friend from step nine. Then we have minus integral x from zero to one, two x log x log one plus x squared over one minus x squared. Do the substitution, y equal to x squared. 2x dx is dy, log x is log y to the power one half, that's one half log y. Log one plus x squared is log one plus y. One minus x squared is one minus y. We have minus one half times integral y from zero to one, log y log one plus y over one minus y. From step 10, we know that this integral is zeta of three minus pi squared log two over four. We now know this integral. Knowing these two, we obtain that integral x from zero to one log x log one plus x squared over one minus x squared is minus pi g over two minus pi squared log two over eight plus seven zeta of three over four. We now have the whole family integral x from zero to one log x log one plus or minus x squared over one plus or minus x squared. As I said in the beginning, the case of minus and minus was obtained using the data function. Here is another derivation. Integral x from zero to one log x squared over one minus x squared one over one minus x squared is summation over non-negative integer g of x to the two g. Integrate term by term using the very first result. We get this sum here, which is two times one over one cubed plus one over three cubed plus one over five cubed and so on. This is zeta of three minus one eighth of zeta of three. This integral is seven zeta of three divided by four. Integral x from zero to one, the square of log one minus x over one plus x all over x can be evaluated using the change of variables y equal to one minus x over one plus x, which means that x is one minus y over one plus y, dx is minus two dy over one plus y squared. This integral is exactly double the integral we have in the previous step. If we have integral x from zero to one, the square of log one minus x squared over x, we use the change of variables y equal to x squared. In this case, we get one half the integral of step four, that integral was double zeta of three, so this integral is equal to zeta of three. In 17, in the numerator, we have the product of two logarithms, log one minus x times log one plus x. We use this identity. Alpha beta is alpha plus beta squared minus alpha minus beta squared. From this difference, we get four alpha beta. Dividing by four, we get alpha beta. The numerator here is one fourth, the sum squared. So this is the square of log one minus x squared minus the difference squared. That's the square of log one minus x over one plus x the two integrals we have here were evaluated in the previous two steps. 
What about integral x from 0 to 1, the square of log 1 plus x over x? We use this identity. Beta squared is beta plus alpha squared over 2. So from here, we get 1 half beta squared plus 1 half alpha squared plus alpha beta plus 1 half the difference squared. From here, we get 1 half beta squared plus 1 half alpha squared minus alpha beta. So these go away. We get beta squared as desired, but we have also alpha squared. We need to subtract it to get beta squared alone. In this particular case, beta is log 1 plus x, alpha is log 1 minus x, the sum is log 1 minus x squared, the difference is log 1 minus x over 1 plus x, and here is the integral with alpha squared in the numerator. Using 4, 15, and 16, we obtain that integral x from 0 to 1 log 1 plus x squared over x is zeta of 3 over 4. Our target is integral x from 0 to 1 log x, log 1 minus x squared, which can be written as log 1 minus x plus log 1 plus x, all divided by 1 over 1 minus x squared, which can be written as 1 half between brackets 1 over 1 plus x plus 1 over 1 minus x. So the integral of interest can be written in terms of four integrals. The integrals x from 0 to 1, log x, log 1 plus or minus x, divided by 1 plus or minus x. The integrals with the minus sign in the denominator, plus or minus signs in the numerator, were obtained in steps 5 and 10. What if we have plus signs upstairs and downstairs? We can do integration by parts. The antiderivative of log 1 plus x over 1 plus x is 1 half the square of log 1 plus x. We get this integral, which is here in 18, when x tends to 1, the product is 0. What about the limit as x tends to 0 from above of this product? L'Hopital's rule is used in step 19 to show that the limit is equal to 0. The remaining case is when we have a minus sign in the numerator and a plus sign in the denominator. More of the same. We do integration by parts. This limit is 0 from 19. This limit is investigated here in step 21 and is also equal to 0. We have minus integral x from 0 to 1, log 1 plus x times the derivative of this product with respect to x. This derivative is log 1 minus x over x minus log x over 1 minus x. We split into two integrals. Both were previously obtained. These are the four integrals when we have x here and there. When we have x squared and minus signs, we can write this integral as 1 half times the sum of these four integrals. We get this result previously obtained using the derivatives of the beta function. Our job is done.